Welcome to this morning's session of the Collaborators Competition. Today we're very lucky to have Paul Gregg from the SEO company updating us on SEO strategy because you know what it's like with Google, there's always updates and you know the SEO people are, are the experts. Um, so welcome Paul to your to this Google Hangout. Thanks Emma, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the invitation. Pleasure, pleasure. Now I just want to touch base firstly on the Collaborators competition. We've got five days left till the end of the competition and you've got a great chance of winning and sharing in over $8,000 worth of prizes. Now Paul's given us a great prize which is um, worth almost $1,000 I believe, Paul. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, as a, as part of our uh, part of our SEO campaigns, offer a um, what we call like an article blast, whereby uh, we um, copyright um, thirty articles for our clients, which they can then drip feed onto their uh, onto their uh, blogs or their, their own on-site blogs over a period of uh, six to eight weeks. So. Um, so that uh, content, uh, that constant sort of content curation on site, um, pre provides some great authoritative signals to uh, to the search engines for uh, for ranking. So if you are watching and you want to enter, go to youronlinesalesmanager.com, click the top right hand side which says enter to win and um, you'll be able to enter to win in um, your share of $8,000 worth of prizes. So now we're going to get stuck into a little bit of meaty content, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. Paul, would you mind sharing with us, what? let's start with the basics, what is SEO? Okay, so SEO is essentially making uh, changes, content changes, structural changes uh, to your website um, for when the search engines come through and index your website and understand what your website's all about. Uh, they're, they're able to uh, essentially uh, rank you in amongst your competitors um, on relevance for certain keywords. So um, that that content change can look like uh, like we just talked about, um, you know. Uh, Blog articles, um, you know, frequency of blog articles, having the uh, on-page content uh, relevant to themes uh, within the website. Uh, so it's quite it's quite a technical game. Um, where, you know, I usually sort of get people to have a look at a search engine uh, search engine results page, and uh, you know, try to describe to me the sexiness of it. And um, it's very hard to. Uh, there's nothing creative on there other than um, other than maybe the map, and you know, that, that's drawing a long bow at best. So um, to get uh, to get businesses ranked, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's sort of more down to the analysts and the technicians to, to um, you know using human interaction, and you know, we've got some fairly heavy set um, software tools to assist us as well. So so it's not just choosing the right heading, and that's it. <laughs> that's part of it. Um, you know, we need we need to have. Uh, um, you can go both ways with it. Uh, you know, you, obviously, we need you know uh, you, the, the internal linking structure, URL structures, the page content, um, all your metadata such as uh, title tags and meta descriptions and H1 to H6 tags, um, all optimized correctly. And uh, you know, once, once again, using you know um, human analysis as well as using our um, our particular uh, software tools available to us uh, gives us a plan to be able to do that. Um, and it's an ongoing uh, improval process. You know, uh, Google make um, anywhere up to you know five, six hundred algorithm changes uh, every year. So, um, keeping ahead of the curve as far as um, what the what the search engines see as being authoritative um, is quite uh, quite important in the success of any uh, SEO campaign. And you know, by and large, especially over the last eighteen months, two years, we've seen a lot of um, you know, I guess our natural competitors uh, fall by the wayside. Um, due to the fact that um, you know, I guess they just don't have the uh, the technical resources um, at, at hand to be able to succeed long term uh, within within the uh, within this particular sort of uh, um, marketing niche. So what you're saying is that it's not just a let's get to page one and then boom, that's it, our website's done. It needs to be a continual strategy update. C correct, absolutely. So. Um, We'll, as a matter of course, go back through most of our campaign web, uh, our, our campaigns and their websites uh, on you know usually a six to eight week basis, and not, I wouldn't say perform a massive overhaul, but just those sort of one percent little tweaks to make sure that 
um, you know, whatever updates have rolled out over the previous sort of six to eight weeks, um, or you know, even sooner, uh, that where um, that, that the website uh, or the web property uh, is is best reflective of those um, of those um, you know new authoritative uh, um, uh, criteria. So there has been a big update recently. Would you mind sharing just some of this? Um, yeah, some of the key points in the latest update that will affect. Um, any business that's got a, a website. Yeah, so um, so probably yeah, like I said, about five hundred times a year. Um, you know, the likes of Google will uh, uh, update their algorithm, which is basically the robotic librarian who uh, digs up the best content uh, whenever the user keys in uh, search queries. Um, so every so often, Google pulls out a like a GFC T Rex uh, um, size uh, algorithm uh, adjustment, which uh, really changes the game. Um, so in a sense, you know, uh, like like we were saying, you know, SEO is not a short-term, short-term fix, uh, such as AdWords or you know, or the like. Um, and I guess if um, you know, if we've got f there, there are the fly-by-night operators um, with you know cookie-cutter style solutions that just don't wash anymore, as far as uh, you know, from from what the uh, search engines are, are valuing as um, authoritative uh, results uh, for particular search queries. So, so um, basically, sorry to interrupt, Paul. So sure. going out and link farming is not going to work for you anymore. Absolutely, link farming was saying that probably yeah lost all value about you know two maybe two years ago. Uh, well, the the last penguin uh, penguin algorithm update really sort of put that nail in the coffin. Uh, we've had we've had penguin 2.0, which uh, further refines uh, a lot of that uh, off page. Um, uh, off page value. So uh, things like um, uh, you know ideal number of keyword anchor text links. Um, if you've got a lot of branded, so when, when we float off site content, you know we link back to the main web property through uh, anchor text links. Um, if the, we've got actually any more than one percent of them that are that are um, brand related um, or brand specific, um, that that particular article piece will lose uh, will lose value. Um, you know only links. Terms, Paul? Can you make I, it a bit for me? Sure. So, so you know, we, we do work both uh, on site, which is um, updating uh, static page content, uh, doing blog articles on site, and the like. Uh, but then we also uh, write write um, authoritative uh, article pieces, which we float through different um, networks of you know, I guess that we've um, established and discovered over the last six or seven years. And what that does is um, by placing content on these particular sites, which do, doesn't really um, doesn't float the brand so much. Uh, the way we attach it is through like a hyperlink on a particular um, piece of text that links back to the main website. So, if, uh, if we're on an architect's, uh, if we're doing a work for an architect, for instance, and they're talking about green energy, we'll, we'll find somewhere in the um, uh, a keyword or uh, key keyword phrase within that um, particular article piece. And in one particular instance, it was uh, installing a solar system to link that back to the uh, to the uh, main web property. So, um, what we want to uh, do as um, as SEO providers is essentially emulate what any business owner would do if they had the time to sit there all day every day doing it themselves. So that's yeah. um, providing some um, you know great um, some great uh, article content that has, from the search engine's point of view, has. Um, very low commercial intent. We're not, uh, you know, putting Architect Brisbane, you know, twenty times through an article. Uh, we're not writing the the business name twenty times through. We're not stuffing terms in there. We're just basically presenting some um, some good quality content that's going to inform the user, and uh, and that's what the uh, that's part of what the uh, search engine see as being um, authoritative. So it's got to read well. That's the most important thing. That it's actually that's adding value. That's right. You know, once upon a time, um, there was uh, programs called content spinners, which basically you could load a couple of keywords into, and it'd write an article for you. So, uh, but you know, the cert, you know, the likes of Google are so so far, far, far so, so much more intuitive um, uh, and advanced uh, that they, they can pick up on um, unnatural content, duplicate content. They'll, they'll penalise duplicate content. So it needs to be written um, with. Uh, can you clarify duplicate content. So that sure. If um, so obviously, if you share your content on social media, mm -hmm. that's not. I'm assuming that's not going to affect the duplicate complex content clause. Um, oh yes and no. I think it probably comes down to a bit more of a case by case basis. But essentially, duplicate content is um, say you see a great um, article piece on uh, uh, I don't know uh, the Courier Mail or whatever the case may be, and you go and. Uh, 
basically copy and paste, either copy and paste that or just go through and make minor sort of um, uh, alterations to try and repurpose it. Um, if there's a certain percentage of, uh, of uh, common content uh, that the search engines pick up on as being um, available elsewhere, uh, it potentially will get nailed for our duplicate content. So um, any piece of content that uh, appears on a website or um, off-site, off off-page rather, um, in other um, you know, forums and things like that, but link back to your website, need to be um, written uh, originally in a sense. So um, you know, we've got many uh, copywriters and editors that, uh, that obviously write um, unique content uh, up front, but also uh, you know, we, we check to make sure that um, you know, it, it doesn't lie within those percentages of uh, that, that'll make it um, uh, potential for, for, for penalties to be applied. So. Um, yeah. And has there been any major shift in focus with between Penguin and Penguin 2.0? Um, yeah, a lot, well, some of the big shifts would be um, was uh, same jurisdictional uh, um, links. If you're going to apply links, like so, when I was talking about that off-page content, if we're um, floating a piece of content on a um, on a you know high uh, high uh, page rank, um, maybe a forum or a blog site or whatever, or you know a dot edu dot au site. If we get the permissions to be able to do that, um, they need to be if they're an Australian campaign, needs to be within Australia. So. Um, you know, getting links or placing links uh, coming into the website from you know the US and Europe, and it's not going to um, provide or not going to uh, leave you open to penalty, but it's not going to provide any value either. So, um, okay. whereby you know we may you know back in the day you might have uh, built you know 20, 30, uh, 40 maybe even uh, high page rank uh, links into your website. Um, we're looking at only doing two or three a month these days because we really go out there chasing local links um, from um, uh, high high PR value sites, and also it needs to be very uh, theme related. Within uh, so you know, if you're an architect and you're you've got some great um, great PR or well, page rank uh, uh, links coming in from a, a beauty salon site, it's really not going to um, you know provide the maximum value or any value really. So. It needs to be, uh, you know, industry specific if we're going to uh, build them. And once again, it just comes back to the fact of um, having that natural appeal and, um, you know, acting yeah. like that, um, sitting in the business owner's chair. And you know, naturally, I'm sure most uh, most businesses out there wouldn't naturally, if they were an architect or a, or a builder, um, you know, uh, place to place a, um, you know, an article piece or a blog comment linking back to their website from something that's completely unrelated unless there is that sort of direct relationship. And what if you don't have a local business? What if you have a truly international business um, and you're getting, you know, you're getting articles posted overseas? Um, is how does that work? Well, well, the search algorithms have, have you know, allegedly has around 200 different settings. So there's other other factors that that will fall into, um, you know, what a search engine sees as authoritative or not authoritative uh, for a particular term. Um, now, you know, social social signalling is making up a, a, a larger chunk of uh, of the um, the overall um, uh, process of uh, determining authority. So, uh, so if, we, if you have a, a truly international business and you've got content on site that has um, has maybe a, a theme, a, you know, a, um, a place in, in say the US, but then you've got uh, people from the US who have got registered uh, social accounts within uh, the states who are, you know, maybe on even low level sharing that content and commenting and uh, you know providing those uh, rich signals. Uh, you know, the, the potential is that it's um, it will be seen as uh, legit, um, and then uh, you know assign the uh, relevant authority that goes along with that that particular um, content piece. So, uh, but I guess you know from a case by case basis, that's what we would look at. Um, you know, from a from a campaign point of view, is okay, great international business. What do we need to do to provide the uh, search engine with the right um, signals to uh, to um, provide the authority to the uh, to um, uh, to, to particular uh, web properties. I like that word signal. That mm -hmm. to me, as a visual person, that really um, yeah, flat resonates with me. That you know, different activities have a different um, signal height, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. For the search engines to find, would that be a good yeah. way of looking at it? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, a social recommendation um, for, you know, for, from the beginning of time has been, um, has been a very important part of the, the buying process. So, um, so, you know, once upon a time you used to lean over the back fence and uh, uh, Mrs. White used to talk to Mrs. Jones and, you know, if the, they needed a local plumber or something like that, well, you know, if uh, one knew of a, of a, good, um, a good local plumber, well, there's that social recommendation coming into play. Um, you know, you, you can very easily uh, conceptualise that being online now and, uh, you know, you know, if I'm on Facebook, I you know, constantly see someone looking for a particular... Um, a product or service, and asking for uh, for someone to recommend, and there, there's always a plethora of uh, people, you know, ready and willing to uh, to help out in that sort of sense. So, um, so yeah, so when it boils down to it, social recommendation and that signalling process of you know um, liking content, sharing content, um, commenting on content um, is what the search engines uh, are more and more leaning. Um, it doesn't make up the major part or the, the uh, major part of the mix as far as um, SEO is concerned, but it's certainly becoming more and more important. Okay, and um, they've been talking on Google Plus platform for a, a couple of months now that um, Google Author Rank was going to be a big part of the next update. Did that happen with Penguin 2.0? Yeah, to a certain degree. Um, yeah, uh, authorship is becoming once again more and more important, and it needs to be done um, in a legit sort of way. You know, even down to uh, you know using um, uh, um, what's the word um, uh, images that don't represent the actual author, such as you know eye stock photo or stock photos and things like that, will be picked up on and penalised. So, um, so authorship, yes, is definitely becoming. Uh, um, more and more of a uh, um, authoritative signal to the search engines uh, for um, you know overall web property um, authority. It certainly makes you stand out on page one if you've got um, you know the photo and by absolutely your name. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's probably a picture paints a thousand words. It's probably not the uh, probably not the analogy to use, but um, it does certainly um, it does make you stand out. And you know, I, when, when I look uh, through um, you know the SERPs for for different searches, you know that it does become a um, a, a little bit of a billboard in a sense. And and once again, you know, you, you've got a business. It, what seemingly looks like a business owner or someone authoritative within that business. Um, you know, uh, put it, putting their profile forward and uh, and you know creating that bit more of a human feel to uh, to the uh, to the actual overall results instead of being all text on a page. Which is a really good point because for larger businesses that you know struggle with that personal feel, um, mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah, it's that whole branding thing. Do you want someone being an you know? Pitched as an expert in the author rank, um, which comes up in searches, or do you want the brand to do it? Can you set up a authorship for a brand, or does it um, have to be a person? It, it typically has to be a person to attract maximum value, and um, I guess you know it leans a bit further forward from um, from um, just attaining rankings. Uh, you know, if you look at a, a financial planning uh, firm, you know they may have a um, Know, an investment strategist who becomes an SME within the business. Um, you know, they may have an accountant who, who who becomes an SME within the business. They may have a corporate and governance uh, type person who becomes an SME. And certain certain uh, you know, if the client base is uh, is diverse enough, well, you'll have certain people taking certain interests in those particular uh, authors, if you like. So um, you know, uh, through the likes of LinkedIn and uh, sharing content, um, you know, relevant content, whether it be you know topical or evergreen. Um, you know, setting up, you know, get, encouraging people to to attach themselves to different, you know, feeds and whatnot to, to uh, receive that content. Um, you know, floats the floats the brand essentially um, every time you put something out. So it certainly seems that, like across all platforms, whether it's SEO, Google Plus, um, that Google is liking the person behind the brand. They're they're sort of. Um, setting up the system so that it is the person behind the brand that needs to be at the forefront. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, yeah, you know, I guess the search engine, without, without saying definitively, we, you know, do want that sort of human appeal and, uh, um, and, that, and you know, that, that social connection between the two. Um, and, yeah, you know, once again, it goes well beyond um, 
well beyond um, just attaining rankings. You know, people at the end of the day, you know, everyone's got a product and a price, but you know, not everybody has the same people, and um, you know, people buy off people. So, um, you know, if we're uh, as a, as a company or um, as an entity. Um, you know, uh, distributing and um, and generating some good quality content that people find interesting, um, are out there sharing and uh, promoting with uh, with with their um, social groups. Um, you know, great great signalling for the search engines as far as you know from from a business point of view and a marketing point of view, attaining rankings. But also, um, you know, the, the the effect is is you know exponential as far as you know um, your products and services and your expertise being um, you know infiltrating other areas and other you know uh, groups that you may not have uh, ever had contact with before. Yep. So, just to recap on what we've covered today, because thank you so much for giving such great content. Um, we believe at Yossum that people can focus on three things really, really well at any one mm -hmm. time. When it comes to SEO strategy, you know, there's 500 updates a year that you can't, um, as a business owner, you can't focus on all of them. No, no, that's <laughs> um, right. So if there was three key things to focus on with SEO for the next six months, what would you say that would be? Um, I would say, uh, well, two major ones, um, or th three, um, two majors would split into two, set, setting up all your social platforms. Um, correctly, so looking at you know if you're a visual business, um, you know uh, get, getting some uh, getting a, a Pinterest uh, account set up, um, you know that could be good from anyone from from dress shops through to uh, through through to landscape suppliers, anyone who's got any sort of visual appeal to their business. Uh, Pinterest very important for our businesses is LinkedIn, so setting up a uh, LinkedIn account and start establishing connections with um, with people in the same sort of uh, I guess jurisdictional sort of area. So. Um, you know, for instance, I, I generally attract uh, marketing and advertising um, professionals from Brisbane and Sydney. So, um, and you know, when we generate content, people see uh, that content, and you know, I find you know I get a lot of likes from um, from people uh, you know consuming the, the, the content that we write. Um, so setting them up and then using them effectively. So you know, have, don't don't fatigue your audience with you know four, four or five different uh, articles every day. Um, you don't want to chase people away, but make, make it very uh, poignant uh, when you do uh, um, float some uh, float float content and, uh, and deliver content to the uh, to, to the user. I'd say probably the other one would be uh, on-site blogging. Um, yep. but writing an on-site blog keep uh, keep very th uh, you know keep within a the theme. So if, like I said, if you're an architect talking about um, you know uh, green energy and incorporating green energy into a new house build, um, don't. Deviate off and start talking about um, something else like uh, uh, I'm not sure you know laying a foundation or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. Keep it short and sharp. Don't make it a war and peace. You know, two to three, maybe four hundred words at a stretch. Um, but yeah, short, sharp, concise. Uh, some blog articles makes it easy for uh, for you know the business owner to write because they don't have to once again try and dream up the war and peace to uh, to uh, to deliver their message. Uh, but do it on a regular basis. Um, you know. The, the, there's there's a lot of research out there, but even blog regular blogging like four or five times um, in a week, which it can be seen as a little bit of a little bit um, excessive, but um, can dramatically affect your uh, your um, your overall uh, rankings across certain search terms um, over over a shorter period of time, being you know you know four or five months. Did you say four to five times per week? Yep. So wow. you know, well, th let's say three to four times a week. You know, if we're, if we're <laughs> Getting short, sharp articles on there. Um, uh, yeah, that that we see from a from a self service point of view, as far as uh, you know, business owner approaching uh, approaching um, you know a digital strategy themselves. Um, blogging does have um, have um, you know an immense amount of value, but yeah, just yeah, I guess you know, sticking sticking to uh, sticking to a particular theme and not not making it too long and too uh, um, you know arduous to, uh, to to get through. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that today. The takeaways from today are um, set up your social platforms properly and um, engage your clients on those platforms and that's going to give you what I call Google cookies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, secondly is focus on your on-site blogging, which um, is great because we actually have um, Sean Rasmussen from Learn How to Blog joining us later this afternoon to um, tell us how to blog. So, Perfect. Um, Good segue. Thanks so much, Paul, for sharing today. Did you have any My last pleasure. words that you wanted to share with the audience? 
and it looks like Paul's just frozen. <laughs> well, if you'd like to enter our competition and yes, win the prize that Paul's um, offered, which is 30 article content um, rich articles for your business, um, then join us over at youronlinesalesmanager.com. Top right hand corner, enter to win, and you can enter to win um, any one of numerous prizes um, up to the value of $8,000. So I think you're back now, Paul. Hi, yep, I'm back. Excellent. Did you just want to tell um, everyone just a 30 minute pitch about your company and what you do? Um, yeah, so we're the SEO company based in uh, Newstead. Um, you know, we've been around uh, as a company for about 12 months, but with uh, other associated companies, been doing SEO for about four or five years. Um, we're very, uh, very um, uh, heavily driven towards content, and also, you know, we've got quite a large expertise base. Everyone from, you know, editors to copywriters um, to analysts. Uh, so it, it, it's a very focused. We, we only do SEO. Uh, we, we're not sort of a, um, you know, a jack of all trades, master of none. So, and we've we've got clients ranging from large, uh, you know, shed retailers um, nationally right down to. Uh, you know, one one um, one location beauty salons. So, uh, like I said, you know, it's not a um, you know, SEO is not a sexy industry in a sense. So it's very technical. So as long as you've got a uh, a good website and uh, you've got uh, a competitive marketplace, we can certainly help you uh, get ranked and uh, get you in front of the traffic you need to be able to um, you know grow your business. Let's face it, Paul. Page one on Google is sexy. It is sexy. Yeah. <laughs> they can buy sexy things. So. <laughs> exactly. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, we look forward to having you enter our competition at youronlinesalesmanager.com. If you want to contact Paul, then Google the SEO company and Paul's name is Paul Gregg and he, you're on Google Plus, I'm assuming, Paul? Absolutely. Excellent. Yep. So go and My mug shots up there. <laughs> Go and circle Paul on Google Plus and um, see what he shares with his articles there. That's it for us for this morning and we look forward to seeing you back here this afternoon. Thanks everyone. Bye.